Welcome to the latest issue of the Home-Based Business Owner Newsletter. This is Dave Espino and I'm actually going to be doing this newsletter in video format now. It's going to be an interesting combination of video and PDF and in the video I'm going to share with you some new websites, some new articles, uh, just anything that's new in the world of home-based business and then in the PDF you'll get the actual links to the detailed articles so you can look at them in more detail. So. I'm looking forward to this. I think it's going to be a great way to convey the information, the latest information that's out there, and also to compile all this much more quickly for you and easily so that I can be very consistent in getting the newsletter out. I also think the video format is going to be very exciting. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the very first link that you're going to get, and this is an article about Amazon FBA. If you're not familiar with Amazon FBA, it's an incredible program by Amazon that allows you to ship all the items that you're going to sell on Amazon to one of their fulfillment centers, which is pictured right here. And then when those items sell, Amazon does all the picking, packing, and shipping for you. It's an incredible program. Uh, it really has revolutionized the e-commerce business because you can actually use Amazon's fulfillment centers to fulfill and ship any items regardless of whether they are listed on Amazon or if they're listed on eBay or if they're listed on your own website. You simply ship them all to Amazon using their incredibly low shipping rates and then when the item sells from either Amazon, eBay or your own website you create a fulfillment order and Amazon does the shipping for you. It's pretty amazing so that's your first link in the newsletter. All right, and then next up we have a great article for somebody who wants to drive traffic to their blog. If you're a blogger or if you want to drive traffic to your blog or your website, this article here is going to give you five traffic driving hacks. It's going to show you five different ways to transform your blog into a traffic driving and profit making monster. As you can see, these five different ways, landing pages, infographics, interviews, top 10 lists, and social media. So if you're a blogger or if you own a blog, and just about everyone should nowadays, then that's a great article. Let's go to the next one now. All right, and link number three is going to feature 21 conversion rate optimization best practices for beginners. Now this is an older article, but I still found it useful and I thought it would be very helpful, especially if you're doing any kind of internet marketing these are some important things you need to look at when you're marketing online. You know, every little thing you do on your website is critical. It can either repel or attract visitors. It can either uh, make people bored or get them excited about doing business with you. So these are some things you want to look at. You want to look at your form fields. You know, are you asking your visitors to give you too much information? Oftentimes, the more information you require from a visitor, the more likely it is that they will either abandon the shopping cart or that they will abandon your website. Uh, here's another one. I'm just going to cover a couple of these. Use a contrasting color for your call to action button. So if you have a call to action like Get Started Now, um, for example, you might want to use a contrasting color because that will increase the number of people that click on your button. And one of the buttons that's really uh, performed really well is a bright orange button because people associate it with the Amazon Buy Now button. So it's something to test and these are things that you can test uh, very easily doing A-B split tests. Get rid of your automatic image sliders. You know these are where you've got an image on your website and it slides and then another image shows up. It slides and another image shows up. People are immune to those and it doesn't really do anything for your site. So. These are some great tips. I think they're very important to look at and to consider if you're building any kind of a website. And if you're working from home, you probably have at least one website. Let's go to the next link. And the next link is on Fiverr.com, one of my favorite websites for getting stuff done inexpensively. What they did was they wrote an article about freelancer statistics. So if you are a freelancer or want to be, here's some interesting statistics about freelancing. It says 40% of the US workforce will be freelancers by the year 2020 and 79% of Millennials would consider trading their full-time job 
for freelancing. So freelancing is on the upswing. And in fact, I've got a Udemy course all about freelancing. So I'm going to include that link as well in uh, with this link. Let's go to the next one. And this is an article I wrote on my howtoteachonlinecourses.com website. And this is very, very helpful if you are teaching online courses or if you are creating Udemy courses. This one is titled, How Do I Increase My Udemy Course Sales? Improve Your Udemy Sales Checklist. So I actually have things to look at in your Udemy course. And this came about because a fellow Udemy instructor wrote a post about the, how he had worked hard to get his course to a high level of quality. He'd been working you know, on marketing his course, but only had about $100 in sales, about 18 students, no feedback, and no reviews. So I wrote a fairly lengthy, it turned out to be a blog post, article explaining some of the things that you need to look at and troubleshoot so that you can become more successful on Udemy. So I talked about things like your course topic, your landing page, your course content, your marketing, and so on. So these are important things to look at when creating a good solid Udemy course. So that's helpful for those of you that are Udemy instructors. In the next link, we're going to have an article about 12 secret Facebook features every marketer should be using. And these were really good. I thought it was there were some really good uh, artic article points here regarding content curation, curating content, regarding competitive intelligence, regarding page management, and regarding ad management. So every marketer should be using Facebook, depending on the type of marketing that they want to do, you should be using either Facebook ads or social posts or boosting your post, uh, things like that. There are many different ways to use Facebook. Now, is Facebook right for everyone? No, but every marketer could probably find a way that Facebook will work for them. So this is a great article. It goes into really good detail on some features that we often either don't know about or maybe aren't uh, very sure about how to use. In the next link, there's a very interesting post on LinkedIn called The Differences Between Successful People and Unsuccessful People. And I really like this article because it went into detail on the key differences between successful and unsuccessful people. I think it gives you something like 20 uh, looks like it gives you 16 points that really are going to help you to understand the key differences. You want to be more like the successful people, obviously, and less like the unsuccessful people. And rounding out the end of this newsletter is how to subscribe to this newsletter. It's very simple. Just go to homebasedbusinessowner.com slash free report, and I'll include the link, by the way, so you can just click on it. Order this free report that shows you how to turn your experience, whatever experience you currently have, into a $100,000 income. So go ahead and fill in your name and email here, click to receive your free ebook, and then you'll automatically be subscribed to this newsletter. So I hope you enjoyed this newsletter. Go ahead and click through the links and take a look at all the things that you uh, are getting this month, and I'll be seeing you next month.